So one of the, the coolest things that I've gotten to do recently is become the cool movie uncle to my nephews. They're like mm. uh, six and ten now. Um, and I've shown them all sorts of movies. Some age appropriate, some not age appropriate. <laughs> um, but the only movie that they've ever asked me to put play again right after we watched it was Tron. Ah. So uh, I wanted to bring that up and, and ask you if you've gotten that from, from people and, and why you think that it's still resonating even with the generation yeah, that's so far removed. Well, from you know... Um... It's the future. Uh, have you been um, digitized? Have you? Have they put you into I the computer? I've done that's... motion captures. Yeah, yeah but you. Yeah. No, no. I mean, where you know, like in the original, uh, in the original Tron, we shot it in seven millimeter, black and white, and then it was all hand tinted. Right, the yes, second yeah. one, they scanned you, and it felt like you were being like it was a part of the original movie. They scan you. Now I'm in the computer. And you, you, I'm surprised you haven't done this. No, yet. I have. But oh, you then, have, because yeah, then they can make. You know, this is the then end. They've of, got me in a database. They've got you, and they can mix us. You forever. Know, say a little of Colin, a little of Jeff. So do you, we don't up. need to show up anymore. That's or the, even get yeah, paid. It's uh, the kind of the, yeah, it's the end of the. You know, it's a different. Us. It's a different thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just need to do your voice work. That's it. And you can probably do that. <sighs> Not even that. Not no, even they'll have that. They'll have that now. Okay, so we should talk about the movie, uh, this movie. I'm a big fan of this franchise. Like, I, I love what Matthew's been able to do with it and do it how he's able to make something that always pushes the envelope, yet has fun. Um, and now I'm curious, Colin, with, uh, with your character of Harry, um, he seemed pretty far gone in the last time we saw him. Is that what you, like, when you wrapped that movie, did you expect to come back and revisit the character, or did you think that was just it? I... No, I definitely at the beginning thought it was just it. Yeah. Um, I think that he did, you know, Matthew was not um, trying to cheat. I think, you know, killing off a major character was something he relished yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. he loved the impact of it and wanted to make that decisive. Someone told me yesterday that Stephen King has a thing of, you know, the power of killing off a yeah. loved character. Mm -hmm. in it. Um, and I think it is that principle. So I don't think he was ever feeling like he was about to equivocate. But he also loves to do the impossible and to pull the rug whenever he can and to say, well, you think you know what's going to happen uh, and just mess with anybody's certainties. But it doesn't feel like a cheat in the sequel because you don't come back whole. Well, he doesn't. You, you know we I mean? earn it. Yeah. It's not just a magical, you know, the uh, the wizard comes and sprinkles <laughs> something or just the shower curtain opens and there I am. There was it, a price that you had to pay. For. Yes. And I, you know, you can argue. I still don't know, think I've come all the way back, which yeah. means great. If there's a third one, I've got somewhere to go. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Now, uh, Jeff, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, your character, you know, who's the head of the U.S. version of the Kingsman. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's kind of like this almost deconstructed cowboy. He's like a modern <laughs> cowboy. And you've been doing a lot of like uh, cowboy roles mm -hmm. recently, which is interesting, even in movies that aren't Westerns. You know, like I could look at, you know, Seven Sun even is like you're kind of playing a cow mm -hmm. cowboyish role in that. Is is there... Uh, I, I don't know if there's a real uh, like point to the question, but it's interesting to me that you're that you're playing a lot of these characters. Why do you think that that uh, either you're drawn to that kind of role or they're you, those roles are drawn to you? Oh, I don't really know. West, it's such a great genre. You know, mm -hmm. I guess you could take um, most movies and, and put a, a, a western filter mm -hmm. on them, you know, in some way. Um, I don't really know how to answer that. I I love I remember my dad uh, Lloyd Bridges he was in High Noon you know and he did a bunch of westerns I remember as a young kid you know my dad it's coming home in boots and a hat and he said oh wow. and I'd put that and go around the house you know I mean, very different from my dad uh, yeah. College, yeah. Pro college professor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no cowboy boots bravo. no but I was absolutely obsessed with the whole cowboy mythology mm. you know I was I loved the spy stuff too and that felt a little closer to home yeah you know we have the, the British spies mm -hmm. are, are yeah. part of the you know film law. Mm. But uh, no, I just I loved the gear and I loved the because it was on TV. They were you, if you grew up in the '60s and you were very young, you, right. the, the menu was huge: Guns the Virginia, yeah. the High Chaparral, yeah. you know, smoke, yeah. Bonanza, yeah, all of them. Yeah. Um, and then movie after movie after movie. And now, of course, the Western is still alive, but it's not you know three a week being released as the standard no. fare. Yeah. And I think there's something cl quite close to the rock and roll fantasy too. I mean, there's a lot of the music world oh, that oh, references oh, yes, that, you know, yeah. like the band, you know. Sure. The, the kind of music you, you get involved yeah, with yeah. as well. You can, it's not a million miles away from that Reach, Western yeah. feel. 
Nice. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for your time.